In today's video, we're going to take a look at taming volcanoes with the new steam turbine. So welcome back, my fellow duplicates, to Oxygen Not Included. Now, this video is inspired by many of the comments that you guys have left about volcanoes and how do we tame those and how do we tame geysers and whatnot. So this is going to feed into those. This is also comes in part from a comment from Will over here. He was talking about how the doors could potentially be cycled, opened, and closed in such a way that we could use the mass that builds up out of these volcanoes and whatnot as like a big battery that we could potentially draw power out of as needed. So this is the arrangement I kind of worked with this morning, kind of prototyping it just to see if it'd work out. And here's what I have going on. So in this arrangement here, what we're essentially doing is creating a large vacuum area, and that's going to act as our insulation. Now, the reason we're doing that is because then we don't really need a bunch of space age materials to get insulation material. Uh, which would be quite difficult. Everything in here is made of steel, so it's available kind of mid-game or mid-late game because you because you also I have a transit tube access point. You could do a water lock. The point is is that at one point there it was hard to pull a vacuum inside of a room, and now as the way the game currently is, it's actually not that hard. You just need to run the pump. Uh, a good amount of time in order to pull all of that gas out of there. So you can see in this area, we, we're down to the milligrams. We'll let this run. It, it should only take a couple of cycles, but eventually you will get down to zero uh, inside of here, and it'll be a complete vacuum. Who died? No! I Hollywood! No! Rest in peace. I'm sorry. All right, I went back in time, and I saved Hollywood. You're welcome, buddy. Thanks for supporting the channel. <laughs> Anyhow, as I was talking about down here, it is possible to pull a vacuum, and from my testing, it takes a couple cycles for this to happen right there. Crap! My tube's gone. All right, so let's talk about how we, how I would go about finding this in, in the world. So down here, I've uncovered an iron volcano. Now, you can normally find this because there's neutronium beneath it, so they, you know, it's a good way of discovering where something like this might be usually i find gold volcanoes but an iron volcano is really good for this application because it has a higher specific heat capacity as far as the material is concerned so you have three options for refined metal that's gold copper and iron if you take a look at gold you can see that it has specific heat capacity of 0.129 copper jumps up to 0.385 and we can see here that iron is at a point 449 specific heat capacity. This is important because that's how much energy is inside of each gram of material that's going to be ejected by the volcanoes. So there's a lot more potential energy in an iron volcano than there is in a gold volcano, with copper being somewhere in between. That's important because this arrangement here may not even be worth running if the volcano is either not ejecting enough material or it just isn't using the right material in the first place. But before I get ahead of myself and start calculating all of that, again let's just see how this thing operates as it currently is so after i pump out all of the oxygen in here what i'm going to do is uncover this volcano now I, at this point i would kind of know that it's an iron volcano because that let's say i dig one spot out and i can see it there you know it's real nice now the cool thing about this is you can find out what it is but it won't erupt a bunch of material because it's still blocked it'll say it's over pressured one way you can save a little bit of power here, if you have the right resource, is you can use a miniature gas pump like this because it's just not going to consume very much power and we're not moving much volume, so we're not restricted in that way. So you could just put a little mini gas pump in there to save some power. It takes a while to get all of the gas out of here, especially when you consider that I have this long side over there. This isn't really necessary. You can, you can block this off if you want to. And that would reduce the amount of time it takes to actually pump this to a vacuum. If you take a look at the gases, you'd actually notice that it's a vacuum around the pump, so it's not really doing a whole lot. It just brings it in from the corners. Okay, so it's several cycles later, and we are at pretty much a vacuum here. I mean, we have just teeny, teeny, tiny bits of gas down there, but that won't be a problem because there's just, there'll be so little energy in it that it won't be able to heat up these gas pumps. So. At this point, what we want to do here is uncover the volcano. Now, it's important that once we uncover this volcano, 
um, that we sweep everything up off of it because otherwise the iron or whatever that is going to be ejected by this volcano will come in contact with that and then it will cool before it ever gets down here to the bunker tiles now these don't have to be bunker tiles they're just metal tiles i just used bunkers in this case but some sort of metallic tile with a high thermal conductivity that's heading over here to these doors so these doors are made out of steel and they're set up to an automation signal right here and this is all based on my last video which is automating the steam turbine so everything in here is connected to that Inside of here, I just put a bunch of temperature shift plates because they seem to really just kind of help keep everything nice and smooth and operational with the steam turbine. Plus, this is all like a big, big heat sink. And what we're doing is we're pulling the heat out of it. So the more stable we can make this heat sink, the more stable we can make the energy draw that we're getting out of it. So that's what that's what it's all about. Now there's a really great mod that you can load up and use, and this one will calculate the average output. As you can see, volcanoes can be kind of hard to understand, so that one's pretty handy right there. So once you hit subscribe to that, then you come over here and you find the geyser calculated average output, and then you enable that one, and then it'll ask you to restart the game. Okay, we're going to get a little bit of a warning here, but since this is just a user interface thing, it's not a big deal at all. Click OK, and now when we look at this, we can see our calculated average output is 474 grams a second. Real nice. That'll be really useful when we go to calculate just how much potential energy is in here, and comparing that to how much the steam turbine turns into power. No dupes. One more. One more. You forgot that one. Hollywood. Okay, I'll help him out. There we go. It's all been swept up. <laughs> okay, so now we can see that the iron is flowing out of the volcano here and as it's landing on this metal tile down here watch what happens with the heat it now travels along this this is just so cool i love this okay and then it starts to flow into here and it's going to heat this up so we can see that the iron here is at 130 something degrees celsius so it's not going to stay real hot for a long period of time this is a great way to take some of that heat out of the iron so that you can actually you know, use it somewhere else in your base without melting everything down. However, it's still going to be very, very hot. It's just not going to be like molten hot. So one way to get around this is that when you go to sweep that up with your duplicates or an auto sweeper, um, is that you drop it into an area like this that has a large body of water, water so that it can contain a lot of energy and that you're actively cooling that body of water by some method usually i'm going to be using like an ice maker the only thing is i don't think an auto sweeper and a conveyor is the right option because that heat will want to escape from the conveyor so having a dupe pick it up and move it is probably the right idea unless it's very nearby i don't know all right so nothing really happened on the first cycle this takes a little while to get up and running so here is cycle two we'll see that the temperature is going to jump up quite a bit you can see that iron all the way up here is at 2,500 degrees Celsius. Down here, though, it's dropping from about 700 and, and getting lower and lower as it's heating this area up over here on the right. So the first thing it needs to do is heat up all of this metal and the water as well before converting it into steam. And then that has to get above 125 degrees before it'll even run through the steam turbine. All right, so here is the third time that this volcano is running. And we can see that, yes, the temperature is jumping right back up again. And we're probably going to get it hot enough to make a little bit of steam this time. Now in this arrangement, I've always found that the iron, for whatever reason, flows off to the left side. So that's kind of why it's over there. <laughs> it could potentially flow off to the right, so I left a little gap there just in case, but it's not a big deal. The insulation I'm using here is just Mafic rock. All of the insulated pipes and everything are made of ceramic, so nothing here is space age materials. There's a new Humble Bundle from Full Stack Web Development. These are video training courses that'll get you up and running in things like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and a whole lot more if you take a look at everything that's down there. This bundle is laid out in a very logical way in that you get intro classes, intermediate classes, and then the more experienced ones, and each one leads into the next. 
how these training courses work is they're a video course that kind of plays out like this in short little bits where they show you what's going on and explain what's happening. And you can follow along just like this and what I'm doing here. But it also has a complete write out down below each lesson that explains in detail what's happening there if you're more of a visual learner. For me, this is the type of training course that actually gets me to do something. I'm not so great with books, but videos, I can do that. If this looks interesting to you, then go ahead and check it out using the link in the description below. I'm partnered with Humble Bundle, so not only will your purchase go to help support these great uh, charities such as V Foundation, World Wildlife Fund, or in my case, the St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, and it'll also go to help support this channel. There's several different tiers available, or you can pay what you want. Thank you guys so much for your support, and have a wonderful day. All right, so this is about the fourth time this iron volcano is running. And at this point, we should see that we're going to get a little bit of power out of the steam turbine once the temperature gets hot enough over here on the right. You can see that the walls here are starting to heat up a little bit. This insulated tile is just made of mafic rock. Um, and also the liquid pipes that I'm running in the background here are just made of ceramic. I'm not using any space age material um, because, you know, I figured it'd be a little bit, a little bit better of a tutorial if I'm not using like really hard to obtain material. Now there were some comments talking about how we could potentially heat up the water that's coming out of this to get it up to like 99 degrees uh, by just running the steam turbine up near its very limit. But you know what, I did give that a try and it's, it's almost not worth all of the effort that you have to put into it. Um, so what I'm doing here is all of the steam that's coming out of here is just recycling right back down here. and. So we're essentially just sapping all of the heat out of here and then getting a little bit of power out of it. So this thing's just getting started here and you can see that by the fourth time that this iron volcano is run, it is up to about 107 watts and it will increase as the temperature increases over here on the right. And one thing to keep in mind, not only is this the iron volcano, which is the best refined metal that we have, it is also the most active volcano that I could potentially have. So other volcanoes might operate quite a bit slower as compared to this one. Okay, so we're a little bit further into this test here and we can see that uh, we are increasing the amount of watts here. It keeps going up and up and the temperature difference kind of jumps up to about four or 500 degrees over here. And then this one is slowly increasing over time. All right, so this volcano has been up and running for a few cycles here and I noticed a mistake that I made earlier in the video, but unfortunately I can't go back and fix it because of save file stuff. Um, the automation should have been set to below for all of these doors. If it's set to above, what happens here is the doors are closed down and the temperature will continue to go up, but I'm, we're not getting quite as much power out of this as possible. Um, so the way that this was set up here and the way it was also presented in my last video is that these are below, so uh, that, runs the steam turbine correctly. Uh, the advantage of this is that the temperature over here is actually going to stay about as cool as possible. Therefore, we're also going to be cooling down the iron as cold as possible as well. We will see the temperature continue to kind of build up over time over here because uh, we can only draw so much from this iron, you know, into the steam turbine as fast as possible. One possible way that we can get more out of this is by increasing the surface area that this iron has to transfer its energy because right now it's limited between the iron and the bunker tile beneath it. Now the way we can do that is if we put a bunker tile beneath this or on the right or the left of it because heat travels up, down, left, and right but not necessarily along the diagonals. It has to touch something else first. So to do this, that's what we're going to do right there but then we need a medium that's going to be in contact with the iron and um, with a bunker tile on the side. So that is where a liquid or gas comes in. We don't want to have a gas in here, so a liquid is what we're going to need. And unfortunately, you can't really just have whatever liquid you want. <sighs> Let's try, we can try petroleum. Petroleum has to be up at 500 degrees Celsius, so maybe that'll be okay. Oops, that's solid. Petroleum. Okay, so I've got a little bit of petroleum there, and that should help <laughs> do a little bit of heat transfer between the iron and, and the bunker tiles next to it. A temperature shift plate doesn't do anything unless there's some sort of something to contact it. So that wouldn't really do us any good. Just to kind of show that, let's go ahead and put that right there. And then I'll put the iron, I'll just move it right over there. And you can see that the temperature of that iron doesn't touch the temperature shift plate. So having one of those back there is not going to do it. Um, however, if we have a liquid there, right? If we put this petroleum there, 
Oops, that's way too much. Oh no. Get out of here. Stop. I just want a little puddle. Now if we put that over there, boom. You can see how that liquid is the medium that this iron runs through to get to the shift plate. So the liquid's what's important there. The only thing about petroleum is that its thermal conductivity is not that great. It's only at two. Not to mention if it ever gets too hot, it will turn into a whole nother gas. Just like that. So we don't want that. So the only liquid I can think of that would actually potentially work in this spot is good old super coolant. The thing is, if you have super coolant, well then instead of using steel down here, you'd use thermium. And thermium would obviously allow you to transfer faster in the first place. So this might be an upgrade option. I don't know. We'll see. All right, so we can see that the temperature over here dropped to 125. This steam turbine is actually turning on and off. Now let's take a look at what happens. Well, that temperature starts to go right back up. So we can see, hmm, no, no, even that liquid gets too hot. Oh my goodness, what in the world happened? All right, so putting any sort of liquid over here, no, just isn't really, <laughs> not gonna work, isn't really worth it. About the only thing I can think of doing here that's really going to be uh, kind of a, a decent upgrade path might be to replace your steel with thermium once you unlock that. Okay, so I did run a small experiment and comparing steel tiles to thermium tiles and there was a difference. However, to explain this difference is a much more complicated topic for a much more complicated video that will just have to happen here in part two. So if you have ideas of how to increase the efficiency of what I'm getting out here to that steam turbine over there, boom, you know where to leave all that ideas down there below. If I go and explore this right now, I'm going to be recording for another six hours. I'm just gonna have you know. So I really wanted to explore a method um, with this new steam turbine. And I think we have a pretty good one right here as far as creating some sort of metal tile down here and that works as a heat sink right that heat sink pulls it into a coupler where we can then turn it on or off based on how much heat energy we have available and what we're doing with the steam turbine we can also automate this where we're either going to use it continuously or you know whenever we need it up there so there's a lot of different ways we can play around with this arrangement right here but there we have it i think that's probably the most straightforward way we've gone from uh, volcano to energy and compared to anything i've done in the past so i like it i think that's a pretty decent method right there but again if you have different ideas for me leave them down there in the description below if you enjoyed this video maybe consider hitting that subscribe button or checking out the merch store below for some cool swag that also helps support the channel thanks for watching and have a great day guys stay awesome peace brothgar out